So you're ready to brainstorm, but how exactly do you brainstorm? In theory, it sounds like it would be a pretty straightforward process, but I know it can feel overwhelming if you're new to it or if you don't have the right tools in your brainstorming toolbox. So don't just stare at your blank paper until words and ideas magically make their way onto it. Instead, give yourself some creative guidelines using the methods I'm gonna show you in this video. So once you've done some initial thinking on your own, it's time to jump headfirst into brainstorming. Hopefully you have a partner to brainstorm with, but if you don't, don't worry. All of these methods I'm gonna show you in this video are totally doable if you're running solo. So let's jump in and talk about some different approaches to generating ideas. When you first start brainstorming, I want you to go for breadth, not depth. That means a ton of ideas that don't go super deep yet. Now is not the time to be critical of those ideas. We're not gonna think too hard or too long about those ideas. At the beginning of your brainstorming process, I want you to just purge everything that's in your brain and get it all down on paper. This is what I like to call the word vomit phase. And trust me, I wish I had a better phrase for this. But the idea is to just get everything out. I want you to write down all ideas, phrases, words, sketches, whatever is up in your brain, I want you to get it out. I don't care how dumb they are. I don't care how cliche they are. I just want you to write them down. And you can do this word vomiting with visuals too. It can be visual vomit. I'm so sorry for this. <laughs> So when you have an idea, just write it down and include any other thoughts that are surrounding that idea, whether it's words or other ads you wanna reference or sketches or phrases or songs or literally anything that relates to this idea. And then once you start to lose steam on that particular idea, it's time to move on. Remember, this time is for breadth, not depth. We're not gonna be spinning our wheels on things. That time to reassess all of these ideas and be really critical of them will be much later on in the process. But at this point, quantity is going to lead to quality. So do do all of this word vomiting until you got nothing left and then move on to the next few approaches. A great way to brainstorm is using a wall. It can be a physical wall or a virtual wall. One agency I used to work at had a huge magnetic wall where we would pin with magnets all of our ideas up on this wall. And it was so great to just stand back and look at everything we had come up with. And then using those little magnets, we could move things around. We could organize different ideas under different themes or buckets. And then we can categorize things and say, these ideas are the winners. We're gonna move those over here and these ones, and we're not too sure about those. We're gonna put them over here for now. We could also add any references. We could tear things out of magazines and put them up on the wall. We could print out pictures or do sketches and put those next to the ideas that they go with. If you don't have a wall or a whiteboard or a cork board or anything physical you can use, there are tons of virtual options. Miro is one of my favorites. I think it's the closest to mimicking that physical wall. Canva also has a really great virtual whiteboard feature. And some people even use Google Slides and have each slide represent a different idea. The point of the wall, whether physical or virtual is just to give you a space to actually write your ideas down. When you can see everything, when you can organize everything, it's much easier to see the different directions and angles you're going. And when you take a step back and see, oh, I haven't really explored this area in particular very much. Let me go think about that some more. It just gives you a really good big picture of where you're at with your ideas. The next method is word associations. And as a writer, I love this one. You're just gonna make a list of any words or phrases that relate to your brand or product in any way. It doesn't have to be a super direct relation. And sometimes you'll find something that relates to a word that relates to a word that relates to another word. And all of those are fair game. As you're writing your list of words and phrases, ideas are almost certainly going to pop up. Let yourself get distracted for a minute and pursue that idea as far as it'll get you. And then again, once you start to lose steam on that idea, get back to your list. A lot of the words and phrases on your list might not ever turn into great ideas or good ideas or even ideas at all, but that's fine. Try to see if you can come up with something for everything on your list. And if you can't come up with something for a specific word on your list, come back to it later in your concepting process and maybe something will pop up then. And then if you still can't use something on your list, still hold on to it because much later in maybe the execution phase of your project, you'll need a list of words and phrases to pull from to write your copy or to use as tone words and reference words for building your art direct. These lists will come in handy in so many ways. Very similar to a word associations list is a mind map. A mind map lets you go down these rabbit holes of directions. Things are constantly branching out, giving you different roads to pursue. So in the middle of your mind map, you're gonna write a word or a phrase. Maybe it's the brand name that you're working on. Maybe it's the product name. It could be the main message or takeaway that was given to you in the brief. Whatever's in that center bubble is going to be your North Star for this project. So you're gonna start with that bubble and you're gonna find all different branches and associations to build out from it. And just like everything else in this video, you're not going 
going to edit. You're just gonna let your brain go and come up with as many things as you possibly can. Build each branch of your mind map as long or as short as you want. And then again, try to come up with ideas for every single thing on that mind map. The next method is called 100 squares. And I know that sounds a little overwhelming, but let's talk about it. The initial round of concepting is a numbers game. You're trying to use quantity to get to quality. So some people like to force themselves to explore large numbers of ideas. What you're gonna do is draw 100 squares. You can do that on your paper, you can do that on your computer, and you're gonna put an idea in each of those squares. It really helps to set a timer for this method because then you won't even have a chance to overthink, you just have to keep going. What you put in these squares is totally up to you. It can be a headline, it can be a doodle. Just think of each square as a mini ad. I know 100 seems daunting, but I urge you to give it a shot. But if you're really not feeling 100, try 10 ideas, but set a timer for 10 minutes and just do one minute per idea. And remember, no overthinking. One of my absolute favorite ways to brainstorm is to get the product in my hands. I'll try it out, I'll stare at it, I'll take it apart. And if it's not something you can physically put in your hands, just find a way to immerse yourself in it. If it's an item at the grocery store, go to the aisle where your product is. See what's around it on the shelf. Is it up high or on the bottom? Are people looking at it? Are they considering other things on the shelf next to it? If it's a restaurant, you're in luck because you should go and try one of everything. And chances are you'll get too expensive. Just find a way to immerse yourself in whatever your project is. And you're gonna spend your time observing. Write down every observation that comes to mind and then try to pair an idea with each of those observations. Okay, so by now using all of those methods or just a few, you should have a ton of ideas in front of you. Once you feel like you've exhausted that first round of ideas, now you can take a second to edit. Now you can start to be a little bit more critical. So take a look at your wall of ideas, whether it's physical or virtual, and see if you can start to identify some patterns or some themes emerging. Move things around and start to categorize your ideas. This is why it's so helpful to have things written down. Now that you've organized your ideas a little bit, you can start to see which ones are rising to the top, which ones are intriguing you the most. Hopefully there's still a bunch that you're really liking. So now I want you to take those and try to summarize them in one or two sentences. If you can't do that yet, the ideas might be a little too complex. So see if you can take a second to simplify that idea or maybe you can divide it into two or three different ones. If you feel like you're really struggling to summarize an idea and you can't quite explain it in a quick and succinct way, it might be time to just put it on the back burner. If you still have heart for it, you can keep working on it, but again, in this beginning stage of concepting and brainstorming, you don't wanna be spinning your wheels too much on one single idea. Don't spend too long on this first round of editing because you've still got a lot of ideas to be coming up with. This is just to help you review everything you've done from those methods that I shared and figure out which directions are still left to explore. So hopefully those methods have helped you generate hundreds of ideas. And now we're ready to move on to the rest of our concepting series. I'm gonna be sharing some very specific but very fun concepting techniques that will help you come up with brilliant ideas. So you'll definitely want to stick around for that. Happy concepting!